Hi everybody, I'm Lee of CJ Drill, and today's video, well, it's an update to last week's grinder video. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at a used jet bench grinder. It's industrial, it's got eight amps, it's one horsepower, so it's got a little giddy up to it, right? Okay, so here's the thing. It's not a new toy, but it's a new toy to me, right? And I'm gonna have a blast with it. But before I can start to really dig in, and have a good time, there's some things I need to do. The visual inspection of the wheel that's on the grinder, okay? You're gonna wanna turn it, take a look at it, make certain that there isn't anything that's gonna create a risk to you. Now here's the thing, as I inspected the wheel, I saw something that was a dangerous situation. It's not the wheel. It's the tool rest here. And what has happened is the previous owner didn't adjust this tool rest as the wheel wore down. Because these wheels, they tend to wear down after time. And you're supposed to take the tool rest and slide it in very close to the grinding wheel. You really want to be a sixteenth of an inch between your tool rest and your grinding wheel. Let's say, you know, you've got this big gap in there. That's the Grand Canyon when it comes to a grinder, let me tell you. And you're working and you're doing whatever you're doing to your, to your chisel. If it gets caught between the guard and the grinding wheel, it's going to pull your hand right into that grinding wheel. And that's why you want a distance of only a sixteenth of an inch because it's gonna prevent your tool from getting trapped between the guard and the wheel. So before we move on I'm gonna adjust the tool rest and the spark guard too. That's what this is. It needs to be like a sixteenth of an inch away from the wheel. So let me make those two adjustments. Actually that looks pretty good. All I have to do is repeat the process on the spark guard. That's, that's what this is. And looking at the wheel, I also noticed that there is a groove right down the center of it. And see, and this is a perfect example of a wheel that needs to be dressed. It really should be nice and flat across, okay? And that's where dressing comes in. It's obvious that the, the owner of the wheel, the previous owner, was grinding something and preferred the center of the wheel, and that's why it's worn that way. So I'm going to spin that wheel, and I'm noticing I'm not getting a side-to-side -side wobble. And so that tells me that the wheel is pretty balanced. I don't have to really worry about balancing the wheel by shimming it, okay? I mean, because shimming it is a way to compensate for a side-to-side -side wobble. I'm okay there. All I have to do is worry about dressing the front of the wheel because I've got that big groove going down the center. So let's get a dressing tool. Or actually, let me show you a couple dressing tools. Now, these are two different tools, but they both accomplish the same job. So this dressing wheel here, it's got some weight to it. It's really heavy duty. It's got wheels here that spin, and as this wheel wears down, you can just replace it, just remove it, replace it with a new one. Now, this is a dressing stick, and I'm going to show you how to use this tool and the other tool as well. Now, one of the other reasons that I, I didn't touch on that you might want to dress a wheel is it gets really loaded with material and then it cuts down on its ability to cut, you know, really grind down what you're working on. So when your wheel gets loaded, you want to dress it. Now this tool here, it rests right on the uh, tool rest and you just move it back and forth. But of course the grinder's got to be turned on. But that's the action, rest it and slowly move it back and forth, and that will dress the wheel. Now, the same thing is true with uh, a, a stick like this. It's the same action. You just move it back and forth, and it's going to dress that wheel. When I get started, and I turn this baby on, you'll notice I'm wearing a visor. There's going to be a lot of dust. So if you do this, make sure that you got eye protection. I prefer to, to wear a visor because it protects my whole face. The other thing is, don't wear long sleeves because I took off my jacket. The last thing I want is for my jacket to get caught in the grinding wheel because it can happen. Long hair, if you got long hair, pull it back, okay? You don't want that pulled in the grinder either. And then there's a temptation 
to wear gloves. If you notice, I'm not wearing any gloves. Wearing gloves while working on a bench grinder, kind of dangerous. Not kind of dangerous, it's really dangerous. Because that glove doesn't take much to get your glove trapped between the wheel and the tool rest. So don't wear gloves. And then the last thing that I will say that I'm going to do is I always start the grinder up from the side, okay? I Just in case. You don't want to be in um, direct line with the grinding wheel. So I always hit that switch. I stand to the side till it, I know everything's okay and it's up to speed. I'm not finished with the process. I'm just halfway through. I've really cleaned the surface of this grinding wheel, but if you notice, the groove running right down the center is more noticeable. But when I get finished, that won't be there. I've unplugged it so we don't have to worry about the tool being energized. What I will say is if a grinding wheel can look beautiful, well this is one beautiful looking wheel. And that groove is out of there. If you notice there's no center groove. Dressed very nice. So that's it. That's all there is to it. It took me maybe five minutes to dress that wheel. And I gotta tell you it's easy. It's not labor intensive. It's something anybody can do. Hopefully I answered some of your questions regarding, you know, some of the things that came up in last week's video. This is Leah saying you, you can do this. See you next time.